and welcome to another edition of the SBK Betting Podcast, coming from a very, very cold Hereford, where I am currently at the moment, been on a tour of most of the UK, and I can confirm it is cold, subject to popular opinion. Some might believe that it's not that cold. It's very, very cold, and it is causing havoc throughout the country and unfortunately over the last few days we've just seen that it's just getting worse and worse as it gets to uh, the weekend and obviously we're hoping that we can preview some of the best of the action this weekend but we're still in limbo land we will focus on uh, the Fleur de Lis chase at Lingfield because from what we can see we're, we're Lingfield who have done sterling work hats off to them i was actually at lingfield for an all weather meeting on sunday the covers have been down for su such a long time they had to abandon friday's meeting everything in their power basically to make sure this sunday meeting goes ahead and with the temperatures uh, rising as we said it looks like they this meeting which deserves to go ahead will do and it will be really really unfair for long press if he could not run after such a long time off the track 391 days Venetia Williams the son of Diamond Boy has been off with an injury he comes back to throw his his hat into the ring really for the gold cup at uh, two miles six furlong obviously a trip that you'd imagine might just be the, the minimum you'd want to run over and that probably might be the same for a couple of these in this field and uh, you've got the likes of protect rap fugitive after his big win at Cheltenham last time in here as well and as I said, Lon Presse, a horse with so much potential and a lot of talent. Uh, Tom, come to you first. You can't not love what this horse has done despite unseating when possibly had been beaten when last seen at Kempton. And uh, he holds a lot of, I'd say, British hopes that he could be a, a proper Gold Cup contender if he's back to his very best. For sure. He's 8-11 to 11 in this race. This race is on Sunday, so we don't have the full field at the time of recording on Thursday. There's currently nine horses Declare, uh, entered, sorry, and then we get the declarations tomorrow. So whether we see less than eight, uh, I think that's probably a good chance. And therefore, there goes the each way option. So I'm not going to labour the point on this race. Lon Presse is just the horse to beat. He's rated 170. Protector Act's rate, rated 165. I personally don't think he's capable of running to that mark anymore. You can see a couple of the RPRs on recent starts go close to 165. Um, but I think they're probably inflated due to the horses he's running against. And actually, I don't think Protector Act's anywhere near as good. As when he won at Aintree two years ago, I think he's really regressed uh, and quite sharply at that. And then you drop back to the likes of Fugitive in the mid 150s and then 140s for the rest of the field. So there's a big disparity between Lon Presse and the remainder. If you take the same opinion as me, the protector isn't a 165 horse. Lon Presse has to come off the, the layoff. There is that. He had an injury. But off absences of 200 plus days, he has form figures of 111. He goes very well fresh. And actually, he won off 700 plus days first time under rules. Uh, so this horse is well capable of going um, off a long absence like he's supposedly supposed to do on, on Sunday. Um, he's the best horse in the race. He jumps brilliantly. I know he unseated last time, but it was a very good race and it was a bit unfortunate. So, yeah, I just think he doesn't have to be 100% to win this race. I hope he wins, obviously, with Cheltenham in mind. Um, and I hope for Venetia Williams that her flag bearer comes back. I expect he will too. Yeah, as I said, it's been a long time coming for Lompresse, who was a horse that I was, I was hopeful would be, as I said, the, the British number one for the Gold Cup last year. He, he he couldn't make it. They've given him all their time. Ross, R Venetia Williams is very good at nurturing horses. And I was sort of reminding myself of the the various issues Rob guys had to come back from to, to sort of be at his very best at this stage. It's it's kind of a relief, a relief to see that he's just nine. He's actually at a good stage of his career. To, he's not too old. He's still could still be you know peaking if such. He definitely was when we last saw him, and this looks like a good enough without being extremely deep renewal. If it they line up, fugitive comes if here off the back of obviously a career best, but can he back up a success like that? And Limerick Lace, I suppose, is interesting if she runs uh, coming out of mayor only company. And Gavin Cromwell is very keen, as I've heard this week, to to support uh, decent prize money. And she could just be potentially the, the joker in the pack here. Yeah, possibly. I, I tried to do a bit of digging to find out who is like to run, not like to run. I think does he know is they're very keen to run. Fugitive was not likely to run. They were looking at going to Cheltenham, but they're sort of thinking that top weight in the Cheltenham handicap on trials day versus this, this might suit better. Sam Thomas says, I, I will do it as an intended runner. Highland Hunter is an intended runner. That's about the rest of it. Um, 
I think Fugitive can take a step forward. And I think there could be a strong pace on here, which would suit him. You know, he came from a long way back at Cheltenham, certainly further back than they intended him coming from. Um, and it seemed to suit him well, sort of a pace stopping up front. He finished very strongly. Protector at Harry Skelton is going to want to make this a strong pace, isn't he? Because he knows this horse stays. Um, and I often think when Harry is riding with that in his mind, he can sometimes just over egg the cake a little bit and go a bit too hard and a bit too strong. I will do it will want to be ridden forwards because he stays a lot further than this. Uh, Lompresse is a, a forward going horse. Does he know he's a forward going horse? I could just see it sort of setting up for, for Fugitive, to be honest. Um, it's a slightly sharper track. That would be the one concern. They're, they're pretty convinced he's better at Cheltenham on the new course than the old course. Lingfield is quite sharp, isn't it? Turning in down that hill, left handed turn. That might not be to his advantage. But I thought he had strong credentials. Um, Protector has to give four pounds to Long Presse. I just I don't like Long uh, Protector as a horse anyway, if I'm honest. He hangs. I think he's awkward over his fences. He's just not a horse for me. And I think this sharp track won't suit him. Long Presse should win this. He's the class horse. He's a long way clear. But he's 11 to 10 on. This is his second injury. You know, he came from France having had a leg injury. Um, so he's got to come back a second time. You mentioned Royal Pagai, and I thought Royal Pagai had, had a lot of problems, but apparently he's never had a big problem, just lots of little niggly problems. This seems like Long Press has had a slightly bigger problem. Um, and I'm not sure they've had a clean run with him because they mentioned coming back for the Tingle Creek. They then were wanting to aim for the King George. And we're now sort of at the back end of January. So I think that suggests that it's not been plain sailing to get him back. He won the rehearsal last year off a layoff, so it shouldn't be an issue. But I'm just not sure he's going to be in quite the same form. So at 11 to 10 on, I could sit and watch it. I will probably have a little bit on Fugitive because I think he's a horse that will improve for, for this extra trip. And if they go hard, he might just be finishing the strongest. Yeah, that was going to be my question. Is it, it, the race could be set up for likes of fugitive, but it's a it's a real step up, isn't it? He's a, such a seasoned, hardy handicapper, uh, and uh, it'll be interesting to see how the pace develops. But if, as you say, I will do it. Does uh, go, go into this race? They they have to ride in one, one one way. I don't know. They wouldn't want it to be any sort of better than good to soft though. For I will do it if they are going to confirm him. He's a, definitely a, a soft, soft, soft ground horse, isn't he? So interested to see that fugitive. Obviously, keeping your loyalties to him, Otto. He gave you such a a wonderful day, um, Ross, and I don't blame you there. I just, but all the slight worries uh, with Lompresse, he just is the class act, and you can see that what. Venetia's done with him, you know, giving him that tough, tough assignment in the rehearsal chase of, of top weight. He seems to be a, a brave horse, a, a real fighter. And I like the, the attitude he possesses, the will, and potentially won't, he's too short at that price. But the class that he has shown, he deserves to be up there. Again, not a betting race for me, but we'll be really hopeful that Lon Presse is back to his best. And it just shows what, what he could do going forward and potentially be, be a horse that might be up there and, and giving uh, the likes of Gallop into Sharp. But it'll have to be very, very, very good, you'd have to think. Just quickly on that, Ross, maybe. What does he have to do to show that he is a real Gold Cup contender? They've got a good amount of time between now and then, but he's going to have to do something exceptional to really be challenging Gallop into Sharp from a betting perspective. Yeah, from a betting perspective, absolutely. But to be honest, as long as he doesn't blow out really badly, mm. and I'd be more interested to, to to hear what the vibes are coming out of the yard in the next week, 10 days. If he runs a solid race, he's probably the, the most interesting angle coming into the into the Gold Cup now. Because if you take the the, the Irish form literally over Christmas, Galloping de Champ has got everything from Ireland beat and beat comfortably. So the, And we know he can beat uh, Brave Man's game. Um, so the only horse that potentially we can make an argument about, and it and it's discussion is what fuels racing, isn't it? It's, it mm. You've only got to go on on social media, and okay, sometimes it can be a bit of a toxic place, but it's always fueled by opinions. Sometimes people hold their opinions too strongly and believe their opinion is a fact. But to have a good Gold Cup, we've got to have discussion going into it. And if Lon Presse can run a solid race here, come out and get some good vibes coming out of the race that he's taking the race well, et cetera, et cetera, he can then enter the conversation and it's a conversation that we can enjoy heading into March. 
Yeah, certainly. And uh, reminds me, as, as we speak, as a former Gold Cup winner, Abdul Tard just announced that he's been retired today, last seen coming behind Gallop de Champ. So Gallop de Champ beating now retired horses. And uh, so what does that say about the form? Uh, Lampre says it stands around about 16 to 1 for the Gold Cup. So you can either take it now or see what happens on Saturday and, and how much that price shortens. OK, that's the Fleur de Lis, which we really hope and I very much assume will be on. Clarence House Chase and slightly less uh, um, confident around that. But with racing slightly in hanging in the balance with the weather as it is, it's, uh, it's time for the all-weather to shine, TC, because it's a really good quality card at Lingfield on Saturday as part of this weekend. <clears throat> um, the Winter Oaks is one of several Class 2 races. I think last year we saw Anaf win on his sort of flurry throughout the winter season. He's turned into such a, a exceptional um, sprinter on both the turf and the all weather so I'm looking forward to Saturday and the small fact that Ryan Moore is booked for four rides he's back after his winter doing whichever he does all over the world and he's back at his basically his home track really to have some interesting mounts so lots to look forward to at Linkfield TC. Yeah, there is. <clears throat> I thought you were going to come to me and ask for uh, expertise on fairgrounds or maybe even Riyadh based on the uh, the race cards that was going to be this Saturday. But fortunately, there are two all-weather venues uh, on, on offer, Lingfield in the afternoon. As you say, the racing is quite good there. So don't overlook it just because it's all-weather racing during the jump season. And then Wolverhampton in the evening, not so good racing there. But I am covering it on Sky Sports. So I've looked at it already. Um, my nap does come at Lingfield in the Winter Oaks, as you've already touched on, the 310. And it's a horse called Oh So Grand. I expect her to be favourite. I haven't seen any prices at the time of filming this podcast, but she should be the jolly in this race. Uh, Simon and Ed, Ed Christopher Spilly, she'll carry top weight due to her rating of 89, but I think she could easily be a 100 plus horse if she continues the progression she's already shown this winter. Um, she's won twice recently, the first time at Newcastle. She moved into the race, long straight at Newcastle, probably not ideal for her, but she moved into the race so powerfully, hit the front on the bridle, and just blew the others away in the closing stages. And then she was ridden very patiently out the back at this venue, Lingfield, in a trial for this race. And the way she exploded in the straight was unbelievable viewing for a horse of her rating, mid 80s at the time. Now, that race fully developed into a sprint. So you would suggest the horses on the front end would have had the advantage. I do generally like closes at Lingfield, but obviously when it comes to race analysis, you have to look at the pace. And they went slow, so those who were tactically uh, helped by that, the horses towards the front, had the kick. They had two lengths in advance of the likes of Oso Grand, who was out the back. However, she just blew them, uh, blew past them in the straight under hands and heels riding. And if you go back and look at the sectionals for that race, the final furlong of Oso Grand was 10.71 seconds, by far the quickest in the field. No other horse broke 11 seconds. I love the way she put that race to bed. And I think any kind of similar performance will see her land the Winter Oaks. Uh, on Saturday, the 310 at Lingfield. Um, it's off to Wolverhampton for the next best. Look, I, it's not a strong opinion. I don't really have any strong opinions aside from the Winter Oaks this weekend in the UK. Um, but it's a horse called Optician in the 730. Again, I don't know what price this horse is going to be, largely due to the fact that Sean Lysett's horses are pretty hard to predict in the market. Um, but I think he's by far the most likely winner of the race. He was punted into 15 to 8 favouritism, first time up for the stable, when fitted with a first time tongue tie last month. Uh, he got the job done very well. It was a perfect ride by Ross Ryan that day on the rail in third, moved out in the straight. The horse did hang a little bit to the right in the closing stages, which isn't something I like to see. But as soon as he was challenged, he went again, which suggests there was plenty left in the tank. Um, four pound rise, probably not enough to stop him uh, following up. And he just looks like a horse that has uh, significantly improved since switching barns to Sean likes it. So I'll take optician, break some stool seven again, not ideal, but. He can be held up in mid, mid div. He can be right out of the back. He's a very tactically versatile horse in the 7.30 at Wolves. Okay, a really comprehensive case for Oso Grand in the Winter Oaks, Phillies Handicap, but a race won by her trainer, Simon Ned Crisford, last year with Al Aguilia, who I think you were pretty keen on uh, last year. Yeah. Uh, so let's see if she can uh, give that team a, uh, a, a renewed win in the, that race. And then the 7.30 at Wolverhampton, Optician, a nap, an ex-best. Don't forget, TC1 was his nap, an ex-best last week. Okay, Ross, what have you found for us? Are you are you coming back into the all-weather scene or are you going to keep your eye on what we've got on Sunday at Lingfield over the jumps? No, I'm, I'm steering away from your weather, Jess. Um, I've got one I'll just mention if Taunton by a miracle got on. There's a horse in the 140, the handicap hurdle, Tregel for uh, Kim Bailey. Looks really well handicapped off a mark of 106. 
finished fourth at Taunton last time in a novice, finished three lengths in front of Benny Naha Road. He's rated 115. Prior to that at Worcester, uh, was was a good way behind uh, Fiercely Proud, um, but sorry, was behind Fiercely Proud at Taunton, but three lengths in front of Benny Naha Road. Before that at Worcester, was just three lengths behind Villaray, Ideal Villaray, who is 115 rated. Um, I just think a mark of 106 looks very workable. If Taunton was on, Tregel would be interesting for all that I still have a bit of a concern about the form of the Kim Bailey Yard. And then two, or three I should say, that are interesting, two races, three horses that are interesting at Lingfield on Sunday in the Lightning Novices Chase, which has been rearranged from Friday. Mm. I really do like JPR1 as a, as a novice chaser. I think he is up there with the best in the UK, and I think his recent form is taking a bit of a knock, but I'd still keep faith with him. But I'm just not sure this track is going to going to suit in this sharp turning track. JLo is improving with every single run for Venetia Williams. He doesn't seem to get the credit I think his form deserves. He's not very flashy, he's sort of got quite a short, choppy stride, and he just sort of grinds away. But he's improved every run. I think he'll confirm the form from Aintree with Master Chewy, where all the fences out the home straight were taken out. Um, Master Chewy does get a three-pound pull, but I think JLo will confirm the form there, and I'd be surprised if he didn't land the rearranged uh, Lightning Novices chase, which I think is going off at 12 o'clock. And then the 335 is the Surrey National. And there's two that I'm quite interested in here. Uh, Regal Blue, who I tipped up at Haydock last time, mm. and finished like ran a really strange race and he's done it twice now over two mile four at Leicester and at Haydock race so it hits a flat spot and you think he's sort of falling out the back of the telly and then he finishes with an absolute rattle I'm hopeful that he just needs a bit more of a trip um if he does I think this big step up in trip round Lingfield he's really nicely weighted now be very interested in him he would want the ground on the soft side though and we need to mention that when the ground's had a frost mm. can ride a bit tacky and a bit bit sticky that some horses just won't like it and it's always a sort of time when I'm keen just to rein in my punting a little bit because the ground can be described as soft and actually ride very different um, so regal blue I'd want evidence that the ground is riding properly soft the other horse in the Surrey National that's interesting is O'Connell for Sue Smith I can't believe he didn't win at market raisin over Christmas um, it's uh, slightly spoiled my Christmas actually he traveled all over everything turning in at market raisin um, Missed the second last, came off the bridle and just looked inexperienced against more seasoned handicappers. He's fairly lightly raced over fences and he didn't seem to sort of quite know how to get down and, and battle. He'll have learnt a lot from that. I think Nick Schofield, if he rides him again, will have learnt a lot from it as well. This triple suit, he's still nicely weighted. He'd be very interesting and he would be far more versatile in terms of ground. OK, brilliant. So thank you to uh, to Ross. Let's see. Let's hope that they'll stand their ground. And as you say, a word of warning about the, the conditions at Lingfield, a tight track on sticky ground. It's not might not suit them all. Uh, so um, good luck to them. Good luck for all the naps next best. I'm heading back to the all weather tomorrow at Lingfield. I really like looking through this card. There's some horses that have uh, are really sort of progressing nicely over the, the winter months. And uh, I am starting off in the two o'clock at Lingfield, which is a 0 to 95 one mile handicap. Quite interesting section of horses in here. Roger Varian's got Dragon Icon, who's here off a long, long break. He could be anything, really. And uh, it's quite interesting, but quite a stiff handicap of 95. You've got the likes of Fantastic Fox, who's always promised to be quite a good horse. But Talis Evolver for Richard Hannon and uh, Ryan Moore, who I mentioned has got four eyes, got a couple for for Andrew Balding, but partners up with his old boss, Richard Hannon, for this horse, who has been probably didn't really show what he could do on his early days, but he's kind of got the grips to life and seems to be affected, really affected on the all weather. He's two from two wins from five runs and uh, two seconds as well. And uh, he put a good up, put up a good performance at Kempton last time when beating a, a very decent horse in Aratus. And I think uh, he's, he's a horse that, might be quite difficult for the handicapper to assess. He just does enough when he gets to the front. Uh, coming out a nice draw six, but just has the, the world's best jockey in Ryan Moore to sort of time his challenge to the, the perfect tee. And that's what will be really crucial for Talis Evolver for the really informed Richard Hannon team. So that's my uh, nap selection. And then my next best comes in the 235, the five furlong uh, race at Lingfield, which uh, 
has got a, another very intriguing lineup. Silky Wilkie, who has got an official rating of 103, has been a real credit to his connections. That hasn't been seen since last September. He was a horse that was running quite consistently over the all weather and ran second uh, on this card last year. But I just would worry about him coming off the back of a, a big layoff. Uh, the likes of Bergerac is a, a great, solid, really solid yardstick in here as well. But the uh, team of Stuart Williams, who've been running, horse has been running really well. I've got Diamond Spirit in here, who's going up in the handicap at a rate of knots and uh, is coming here off the back of a four-timer. So looking for a, a fifth-rate success. We know Stuart Williams is really good with horses like this. He did it with Quinault and got Holly Doyle book for still a pretty decent uh, rating of 85. He's a horse that will appreciate a strong pace setup in this race um, if it uh, does is the case he'll come off the pace and I just think there might be a little bit more juice in that mark so I like the look of Diamond Spirit in that um, so that's my next best which comes at Lingfield at 2.35 so whatever time you're listening to this podcast you might already know whether Asker, Haydock, Taunton whichever track is off or on let's hope there might be some miracle especially for Asker who's got uh, what we have previewed earlier the, the, maybe one of the races of the season with El Fabiolo and John Bond going head to head. But if it is not the case, then we do have good looking card at Lingfield. So thanks to, to TC for some selections and also Wolverhampton. But then Sunday at Lingfield will be the, the real feature race meeting. So hoping that we can see a, a nice renewal of the Fleur de Lis as we have previewed. And don't forget, all new SBK users get £30 in free bets when you sign up and bet £10 for the first time. And also, I have to say, you've got to head to SBK for lots of other offers, promotions, and uh, lots of content there. And uh, you'll be able to enjoy that throughout the weekend. And for furthermore, I'm pleased to say that the weather looks like it's going to improve temperature-wise, but to start to uh, become a lot more rainy next week. But it means we'll be back and uh, we'll be able to preview. I had imagine racing that will go ahead at uh, Cheltenham for Trials Day and plenty more. So we'll see TC and Ross next week. Stay warm and uh, we'll speak to you soon.